voltage. This box uh, is the, the magical trig function box. This is the, the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent function. There's a the little input, their little coin slot. You put input into their little thing. Um, so the input, you input an angle into these functions. So you will always take the sine of 25 degrees or the cosine of 38 degrees or the tangent of 52 degrees. You have to put an angle into it, right? Angle in. Output will be a ratio of side lengths uh, on, on a right triangle. So you have a right triangle and there's Different, there's three different side lengths, and um, a ratio just means what? Ratio. A fraction. Comparing two triangles. Yeah, a ratio is just a fraction. So we're going to input an angle, output a fraction. Can someone close that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now. Do you guys, um, have you ever heard of the, the Native American woman who invented Sokotoa. trigonometry? No. Her name was Sokotoa. No way. <laughs> no. Yeah. Wait, are you serious? No. no. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that was cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so good. Okay, Sokotoa. So the sine oh. function. Opposite over hypotenuse. Is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine function is defined as the adjacent side of a triangle divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent function is defined as the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. You may be asking yourself, the opposite side of what, yo? So, here's what it looks like. Right triangle. That's, good. That's right. And then we'll say uh, theta is going to be our variable. Have you guys seen theta before? Yeah. 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 Theta. It's like an X but for an angle. Yeah. That's what my friends no, this call it. Yeah, it's, it might have been a this B thing. So theta, it's a Greek variable. It's like X or Y, but it's used specifically for angles. Right, Zoe? It's the unknown angle. Right. It's an angle. So uh, if this is theta, Wait, so you have to take the sine, cosine, tangent of an angle. So you could take the sine of this angle or the sine of this angle. Um, we usually take the, the sine, cosine, tangent of the acute angles. Because this one um, acute acute angle. Angle. turns out to not be useful. Anyway, so if I'm standing here in this corner, which side is opposite? Over oh, here. Yeah. The one so, not the hypotenuse and it touch an angle. Yeah, so this is the opposite <laughs> side. The hypotenuse is always the longest one, right? It's, and it's generally the diagonal dude. Diagonal so high hypotenuse. Yeah, it's the hypotenuse. It's all like it's all it's Yeah, it, it's height. Uh, it's way height. height. <laughs> and then adjacent is a five dollar word that just means next to. So like Ella is sitting adjacent to Jasper. Ooh, fancy. Let's make a oh, you're adjacent, huh? You think you're so adjacent sometimes. You probably own doilies, huh? You think you're adjacent <laughs> playing by Lynn? <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to figure out when you stand in the corner and you say which one is opposite, not this one and not this one because they're touching. Opposite is way over here. Hypotenuse is the diagonal, and adjacent is the other one. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, the angle is placed opposite the hypotenuse. Another one. It's okay. Uh, now here, good question, Zoe. So here is why it's not good to try to take the sine of this 90 degree angle. Because when you're here, the opposite is the hypotenuse. Is the hypotenuse. So you divide uh, it by itself. What? Yeah, and then it's dumb. So don't, don't do that. Well, they ask you to do well, that. What happens? No, no, no. I mean, it, it, it have to be the hypotenuse is the the opposite. So 
So you divide by itself and it's one, oh, and you're like, thanks for nothing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's cool. The sine of 90 degrees is one. Uh, yay. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's, let's <laughs> practice with, with real numbers. I'm a real boy. Wait, this? The Sokotoa? Yes. Okay. You can't just remember the Sokotoa. Because we want to be living by Sokotoa. Yeah. Life. Yeah, Sokotoa is living. Okay. So. Oh, here's the fun. You're so Sokotoa. So this is angle A. Wait, what? It could be theta or, or A. Oh. Um, but yeah, let's just, we'll make this a three, four, five triangle, because those are my fave. Uh -huh. And um, let's practice writing the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. So the sine of an angle is a fraction. The cosine of an angle is a fraction. The tangent of an angle is a fraction. That's the setup all day, every day. Okay. Yeah? Some people forget the equal sign. Some people just write S-I-N equals something. No, it doesn't, you loser. The sign, you need to put an angle in here. S-I-N is a word. It doesn't equal a number. Stop it. It must be the sign of something. Yeah, it has to be the sign of something. You have to put something in the function. It has to be scientific. Yeah. It's like you have to put food in the oven to make dinner. You can't just say oven equals dinner. <laughs> you, can't eat, you can't eat an oven, you silly goose. Anyway, so... Um, Okay, so what are we going to take the sine, cosine, tangent of? Um, a. A, because that's the angle. A. You better put an angle in there, buddy. A. 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 So the sine of A, remember, so we stand in this corner, we say the five. sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Four, so four over five. five. Opposite oh. hypotenuse. Four over five. Bam. The cosine. Three over five. Three. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Three over five. Four and over three. <laughs> Woo! 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 Ha! The tangents opposite over adjacent. <laughs> Toa. Oh, uh. Opposite adjacent. <laughs> four over three. Okay. Yeah? Is it four over This feels better. better. Yeah. Wait. And uh, so, yeah, all we're doing is taking, um, we're dividing sides of triangles, right? And it's a ratio because, check it out, this could be um, a three, four, five, or. It could be a 6, 8, 10, and be bigger, obviously, and not drop to scale. But the ratios would be the same. So the, so the sine, cosine, and tangent uh, ratios will be the same um, no matter how big or small the triangle is. And that makes it useful. They're like triangles. Similar. Sure. <laughs> they are. They're like. I triangles. know. They're yeah. They're oh, you meant like. Yeah. I thought you were like they're like triangles and like stuff. But no, no they they are like. I mean, they, they are, are similar. Like similar. They are similar. There you go. They are not congruent. They are similar. Okay. Uh. So okay, I know how to make fractions. Yay! Awesome. Uh, why is that useful? So we can use trigonometry to solve a triangle, any triangle, and then solve a triangle means given a triangle with any missing sides or angles, you can you can determine all of the missing angles and sides using trigonometry. So I'm going to give you uh, a simple process to solving any right triangle trig problem. And I want you guys to write this down. <laughs> Zoe and Liz. Uh, solving... Stop, bitch. <laughs> They're doodling. I'm not doodling. Yeah, okay. <laughs> solving any right Santa Claus. triangle... I actually wouldn't be surprised. I'm very disappointed. Solving any right triangle trig question. So as soon as you see a right triangle trig question and you know it because there's a right triangle. It ain't rocket surgery. As soon as you see a right triangle and there's some sides and angles and things, automatically uh, write out Sokotoa ratios. Right? That's not even how you spell that. That's not right. That's not right. 
uh, write out Sokotoa ratios. Uh, just do it. Like, don't even think about it. Just your hands should start moving uncontrollable, and you're like, oh, oh my God, I'm writing, and I can't stop. And you just you write these. You just automatically do it. Don't think about it. If you look at it, you're like, there's a triangle. I know it's going to be trig. And maybe, is it the cosine? Is that the toe coco toko And then, don't even think about it. Don't even think. Just write. Just do that. Boom. And then we're going to fill in some stuff and you're going to solve. Right? So don't think about it because then you're just sitting there staring in this space like an idiot. Write it. And then step two, you are going to... Um, you're going to take uh, any of these equations that you write out. If it has two variables, you can't solve it. Because it's two variables, right? So uh, step two is trash the two variable equations. Trash. Just trash them. Or can't you use recycle. Them. Or you can recycle. It's more draining. That's right. And then step three is solve the one variable equations because you can. Solve one variable equations. Well, by solving them, would you just simplify the fraction? Like, uh, well, so let's 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 do an example. So here's something going on here. Twenty-five degree angle. Um, this is going to be uh, y and x and 13. So uh, you need to solve, uh, well, you could, we could even put a variable here and call it z if you want to so get all. you already know what z is. You already know. What is z? Well, 90 plus 25 is 120, so it's like 60. So these two always add together to make 90. Because if this is 90 be and the triangle is 180, 60. 65. <coughs> hey, hey, Zozo, you okay? You okay? Yeah. Yeah? If you need to get a drink of water or something, go ahead. All right? Yeah, these, so this is 90, these two are 90, 180. So if we know these are 90, 25 plus what is 90? 65. So you didn't even need trig, 65. But the other ones, um, so I got a right triangle, sine, cosine, tangent. So write these out. Step one. Uh, and yeah, and then we plug in what we need to plug in. And so we know it's going to be of 25. We need to take the sine of 25 degrees, the cosine of 25 degrees, tangent of 25 degrees. You got to put an angle in there. Always put an angle in your function. Okay. And now, uh, let me ask. Wait, you put the angle? Yeah, the sine of the angle, cosine oh, of the you, angle. You output the ratio. And then we output, so input angle, output fraction. In with the angle, out with the fraction. Wait, does it give you a fraction? It gives you like a decimal thing. Did I tell you to use a calculator? Sure didn't. We're using brain thinking. So, uh, Megan. Help me with my Sokotoa. Uh, sine of 25. So I'm going to stand here and I'm going to look for the opposite over hypotenuse. Yes, that would be y over 13. Yes, ma'am. Oh, y over 13. Oh. Weezer. Yeah. Cosine of 25. Is adjacent. Adjacent? Which is x mm -hmm. over <laughs> 13. X over 13. And Lizzie, the tangent of 25. Toa. Over Y. I mean, Y over X. Opposite over adjacent. Y over X. Okay, step one. Check. Trash. Step two. Who, go, who goes in the trash? Tangent. Tan. Tangent. Get out of my face. Yo, your tan is trash. Garbage. <laughs> Basura. <laughs> All right. And now we need to solve the one variable, boys. So, uh, 
Let, let me take this guy over here. Sine of 25 degrees equals y over 13. Now, you're just going to do algebra. Y'all know algebra. Don't act like you don't know algebra. And there's, oh, yeah. a, there's a sine function. And you get scared. Of sine of 25 this is just a number. Yeah. Don't be scared of it. Just treat it like a number. <laughs> um, so how do we get y by itself? Multiply both sides by 13. I'm going to multiply both sides by 13. Mm. Bang. And now you may need a calculator. And your calculator needs to be in degree mode because it's 25 degrees. There's also a thing called radian mode oh. that if you get an answer like negative 3 and you're like, the length of this triangle is negative 3, <laughs> don't be foolish. Uh, check the mode, degree mode. I don't know, what's your answer for that? 5.49. Yeah, 5.49 for y? Yeah. Does that seem legit? Yeah. Oh, what did you get? Did you get something besides this? It's multiplied by 13. Yeah, 13 times sine 25. And if, if the hypotenuse is 13, uh, this should be shorter than 13. And it's 25 is a short angle, a small angle, so I believe this. Yeah. I believe that to be true. And now, uh, yeah, if we wanted to solve this, it's a similar deal. We want to get x by itself. Multiply by 13. 13. 13. So 13 times the cosine of 25. So you're in radian mode. He got negative 1.72. You silly goose, so don't be in radian mode. Yeah, don't be in radian mode. Stay in school. Stay in school, kids. Don't do memes. So always check to see if your answer makes sense. Right? This is like 12, 5, and 13. I can dig that. If, if, what if this was like 14.1? No, it's bigger than possible. It can't be bigger than the hypotenuse. Yeah. Right, and if it's a negative number, just slap yourself. Right? Make sure your stuff makes sense. Okay. That's how you do that. Um, let's try another one. Another example. Bless you. Bless you. And we'll do... Um, ooh, see what I did there? Um, we'll say this is... 40 degrees, and this is x, this is y, and this is, um, let's say 10 centimeters. There's, we have units. Oh my gosh. We have a right triangle tree problem. Oh my gosh, what should we do? Right out. So good toe. So good toe. Okay. Yeah. Right, you just go for it. Yeah. Don't stand around and ponder and have philosophical thoughts about the universe. You just soak your toe. What? <laughs> Never gonna do that. Who wants calculator? Me. 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 Uh, Oops. Oops. Okay, that's wrong. Okay, you ready? Wait, what? Wait, what? Thank you. Yes. All right, so let's uh, let's let's soak a Uh What are we gonna take the sine, cosine, tangent of Ikai? Forty. Forty. Yeah, we'll put the angle in here. Carson. <laughs> Let's do the sine of 40. So we're going to stand here and we're going to look for the opposite of our hypotenuse. Why over it? Yeah. Opposite hypotenuse. Uh. Smash it. Smash that pig. Uh, Dylan, cosine of 40. Uh, it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 10 over x. Yes. Yeah. 
And she's completely gave me fat. And Ivan, tangent of 40. It's going to be a while over 10. Ready now? Opposite over Jason. No, you got it. A while over 10. Ivan's a tangent. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, step two, what do we do? Kill, Kill you must die. Yeah. And now we solve the remaining ones that have one variable. Now um let me let me make some space over here. Cosine of 40 is 10. Now I wanna get I wanna get x by itself. Right now x is in the denominator, and that's not really nice. Can you reciprocate both sides? No. Yeah, you can totally reciprocate both sides, or Louisa has an idea. Or you can times both sides by x and then divide 10 by cosine 40. Yeah, so we can multiply both sides by x. Like this. That cancels. And then we want to get rid of, huh, what did you say? Divide 10 by cosine 40. Yeah, divide both sides by so let me let me bring down the result. This is x cosine of 40 equals 10. Equals 10. And then I'm telling you, just divide by. Don't be scared. You treat me like a number. Shut up. You just. Oh no. <laughs> there you go. Now uh, 10 divided by the cosine of 40. And now sometimes your little. Uh, your little calculators are funny. Like these big yellow ones work very intuitively. You type it in exactly like that. But sometimes the, the little um, the little guys, like you have to type 40 and then press the cosine button, and it's weird. So careful with how you type it in. Get to know your calculator, how your calculator works. Make sure you're in the right mode. How do you but, get a radiant mode? I don't, I don't, don't worry about life. it. So uh, <laughs> Maya, you solved it, and you got x equals what? So 13.05, does that sound legal? Yeah. yeah. I got a negative number on this yeah, one. Yeah, so hit mode on your calculator. If anyone got a negative answer or some answer that's stupid, hit mode and then arrow down twice and this says radian or degree. And then you get on to the degree and press enter, and it shades in the degree. You, you want to shade your degree. Why is 8.39 centimeters, allegedly? Does that sound legit? Mine says 13.05. That's for X. Okay, so... 10, 8, 13. That sounds reasonable. If you had like 10, 13, and 147, you'd be like, I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, so th there's that.